Hi, it's Lou Brown with another one of my 101 ways for real estate investors like you to win and close more deals to accelerate your cash flow. Today's tip is number one. <laughs> and let's see what it is. Have a plan of action, such as a business plan, before you start. Well, it's a funny thing. I've worked with real estate investors all across the country and for many years. I've been teaching since 1987. And one of the things I discovered is that a lot of people, whether they've already started or just getting started, don't have a plan. Now, what I mean by a plan is you got to figure out what you're up to. What are you trying to create with your life, with your business? And one of the things that I always think about is the fact that when you get on an airplane, the oxygen mask drops down. And what do they say? They say, put it on yourself first. So one of the things that you got to do is take care of yourself first, your ego. You got to get the stuff that you want. You know, God created an amazing planet and there's all kinds of wonderful things on here for us to take advantage of. So what resonates with you? What makes your heart sing? What's your list of stuff that you want? I got a few examples for you here. Now, what is it that you want? Is it houses? Is it cars? Is it boats? And you know, I've got S's here, right? Is it college? Is it college for yourself? Is it college for a family member, for kids, for grandkids? Is it something that you want to give to someone else in terms of education? How about travel? Travel to where? Where do you want to go in this incredible world? <laughs> it's a beautiful planet. The only problem is all the good stuff is not together. It's spread out all over the place. So where do you want to go in your life? And what kind of experience do you want to have? Uh, RVs, you know, what kind of RV do you want? Now, what you're going to do and what I want you to do is when you make this list, be specific. So like houses, where do you want these houses to be? And how large do you want the house to be? And how much is that house going to cost? You know, start to think about what it is that you want. Start to cut out pictures of things or print out pictures off the internet. What is it that is in your dream, in your vision of what you want? Cars, what brand? do you want? What year? What make? What model? What color? Boats? What model? What length of boat? What style? Is it a yacht? College? You know, where? How much does that cost? Let's put a list together. Now, what I want you to do is make that list, add everything up, and draw a line and that's your number, that's your big number. But there's a second number I want you to come up with and that's your monthly number. What does it cost to own this thing? What's the monthly that we need to have coming in in order to be able to accomplish those goals, in order to have those things and to keep those things too. So airplanes, shoes. I, I had one student, she wanted a budget of $10,000 per month for her shoes. Now, so it's whatever you want in your life. Let's make a list. Let's have a, let's have a great plan. Now, what we're going to do is come up with that big number. Cause what I've discovered is there's a formula and what we're going to do is follow a formula in order to build the size business that you need in order to accomplish those things. Avoid competition by creating outgoing leads. Example, call divorce and probate attorneys. All right, let me explain. It's a very competitive thing out there in real estate and there's a lot of competition that are already mailing certain lists. They're already doing things in your marketplace. What I teach you is no competition deals where you're getting deals that other people don't even know about, never went on the radar, nobody ever saw it coming and you got a great chance to just get a deal and you're the only market for it. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's start with attorneys, attorneys of all kinds, but particularly real estate attorneys, probate attorneys, and general attorneys. So those kind of attorneys have people come to them all the time with situations. 
Sometimes it's a partnership breakup. Sometimes it's a medical issue and somebody's got to sell something. Sometimes somebody went to jail and they got to get some cash to get them out of jail. So there's all kinds of different reasons that people need to get rid of their property quickly. So this is exactly where you come in. Go ahead and connect with with attorneys, let them know who you are, what you do, and that you pay referral fees as well. Now, sometimes ethically they can't take those referral fees, but I bet you they will take that box of Omaha steaks when it comes to their doorstep. All right, that's a great thing. Get help. Use bird dogs that can bring leads, knock doors, and follow up on leads you give to them. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, listen, if you're really gonna build a team, if you're gonna build a flow of leads coming to you, it's amazing that in every neighborhood, sooner or later, somebody's gonna need to sell that house. Not want to sell that house, but need to sell that house. Sometimes it's because a family member passed away and they need to get rid of the real estate because the inheritors just already have a home and they don't need another one. Others is because they're in some kind of emergency. Maybe they just got a job transfer and they need to move someplace else. If you've got somebody going and knocking on doors and asking, hey, do you know anyone in this neighborhood that has a home for sale? And then opening the door to what about this one? then you're getting leads that nobody else knows about. And that's one of my favorite things to teach my clients is how to build an amazing business, receiving leads, no competition leads that nobody else knows about. You can ama make amazing profits with those. Knock on doors of those in foreclosure. Now, be careful. In your state, there may be restrictions to approaching people in foreclosure. Find out. But there's only a couple of states in the country that have a problem with that. The rest of the states have no problem. And if you think about it, when does somebody really need you? They need you when they're having an issue. Maybe they lost their job. Maybe something happened in their life and they just need to be rid of this problem, of this real estate. You can step in. Maybe you can reinstate the loan. Maybe there's things that you can do to take over that property and take care of the issue. Now you say, well, that sounds great, Lou. But here's what I want you to be careful about. Don't just go to somebody and say, hey, I hear you're in foreclosure. Would you like to sell your home? That's not a good plan. Just knock on the door and say, hey, do you know of any houses for sale in this neighborhood? I'd love to buy a house in this neighborhood. And then see what their response is. That might open the door for you to come in and talk to them about their situation. Now, a couple of thoughts. You might ask, well, where is it that I'm going to find out about these foreclosures? Well, we have an amazing piece of software. You can look at it. It's at streetsmartwiz.com forward slash propwiz. That's P-R-O-P-W-I-Z. Streetsmartwiz.com forward slash propwiz. You can look at this amazing piece of software that we use every day in our business. And one of the aspects of this software is when we can step in and find out all the foreclosures within a particular neighborhood. You literally draw a square around a neighborhood and you can find out all the people that are in default in that neighborhood. Send letters and postcards to out of town owners. Well, you may have heard that one before and some of you may have actually done that before with not too much success and I can understand why because a lot of investors are cheap and they go for the cheapest price for the list. Well, let me explain. The list is the most vital thing you can do is get a good list. So you want to get with a good list broker that actually can determine if that list is oversold in your area. If so, they can customize a list for you. We have such a thing. In fact, our clients love our Mail Home Whiz program. You can go to streetsmartwiz.com forward slash mail home, H-O-M-E, Wiz, W-I-Z, and you'll find out more about the amazing program that we use that we're able to generate so many additional leads because we've got that list broker in there and then we've got the most amazing marketing postcard you've ever seen in your life. Now, one of the things is that it's so important that when you mail, don't stop mailing. 
bail again and again and again because what we've determined is that sometimes people see your marketing but they don't respond right then or they're not ready right then. Well, you touch them again in three months, you touch them again in six months, you touch them again in nine months and suddenly they're ready for you. Market to newer neighborhoods where the owners have little or negative equity. <laughs> if you think about it, newer neighborhoods they paid retail for those homes and in many cases the builders are still building there and competing now against someone who may want to actually get rid of their property so that can be a real opportunity for you to step in and take over the existing financing on the property one of my favorite ways i bought my very first house when I was 18 years old by taking over the existing financing on the property. One of the most powerful things I've ever learned in real estate in my entire 40 plus year career in doing real estate. It's been fantastic. And I will tell you that when you don't have to go to the bank, you don't have to qualify for loans, you don't have to resource, it's a phenomenal way to buy real estate. Use signs to direct incoming seller leads to your investor websites or your telephone system. Now, I'll tell you that signs have been amazing in my career. And when I got started in this business, there was a lot of competition. And let me tell you, people used to put a lot of signs on telephone poles. So if you've ever seen signs on telephone poles, it would say, I buy houses, I buy houses, I buy houses, and then it'd say, I buy houses, I buy houses, I buy houses, and then it'd say, I buy houses, I buy houses, I buy I threatened to get a sign that says, me too, and my telephone number. <laughs> and I tell you what, it is so wonderful because that does work. Now, in your area, you may have some problems with that. I call them the sign Nazis. The sign Nazis may come after you and say, don't do that anymore. Well, know where you put your signs. That's an important tip as well. So that if you ever have to remove your signs because the, uh, the city is not so crazy about what you did, at least you know where to go to get those and you won't be fined. They usually give you a warning first and once you get your warning, okay, move on to another of my many. I've got over 200 different ways to, to find deals. So that's just one of them. To find out more and to see some of our signs that we use, you can go to streetsmartwiz.com forward slash signwiz, S-I-G-N-W-I-Z, and take a look at the layouts for the signs that we've got for you. Look for vacant properties needing repairs, find the owner, use a skip tracer. All right, so Vacant properties exist in almost every neighborhood. Some of them don't look so vacant. How can you find out if they're vacant or they're not vacant? Get in relationship with the mail carrier for an area. Now, one of the things I teach you to do is create a target market. Target market is so important because there's relationships you can build in a target market to find deals that nobody else knows about. One of my favorite things is no competition deals. I've identified over 200 different ways that you can, or 200 different ideas on how you can find deals that other people don't know about. That's in my buying volume one system. You can go to streetsmartinvestor.com and you can find out more about my systems. I love to share these ideas with you. Now, vacant properties have been extremely powerful in my life. And one of the things I teach is something called $10 houses. Think about it. When somebody's already moved out, their life has changed. There's a reason they're not in that house anymore. Usually they don't care about that house. Sometimes that house hasn't been paid. Sometimes several months, sometimes several years that they haven't made payments on that home. And amazingly, the lender hasn't foreclosed on that home yet. So there's an opportunity there. <laughs> we call them $10 houses. And I love to teach that to you because it has made a difference in my life and amazing things can happen when you take over those homes. Now I teach you about a way that you can take over those homes without having to go to the bank, without having to qualify for loans, simply by taking over the deed on the property. That's another thing that's very powerful in creating an amazing real estate business. 
So now getting in relationship with that mail carrier in that neighborhood, they can tell you every house in that neighborhood that's vacant. And another thing is you tell them that you pay referral fees, $250 referral fee for every referral that is sent to you where you actually end up doing business, you actually end up buying that property. Mail carriers get very excited about that. Use a credibility kit. Give the seller a reason to do business with you. Now what I use is something that I designed many years ago. You know, I come from a sales background. One of the first jobs I ever had was in sales and one of the most powerful things I learned is that if you have a story to tell and you take it through and explain exactly who you are, what you do, how you operate to a seller, then they're much more inclined to do business with you or someone who might be buying from you, much more inclined to do business with you. So I created a seller presentation kit, a buyer presentation kit, a lender presentation kit. And for example, when I'm going to a seller's property, I set up my seller presentation kit and actually go through with them about our story. Uh, and uh, relax, we can buy your house today. Pretty house, ugly house, upside down house. And then I go through my entire presentation. I explain to them what they're going to see in the presentation. And then I explain who we are as certified affordable housing providers, making a difference, being a community-based business, and really being able to solve problems within the community. Problems that sellers have, problems that buyers have. And what I do is explain, I just take a moment to explain who we are and what we do. We help people, regardless of their credit or financial background, to end up with ownership of a property. And we work with sellers like you and houses like this in order to offer those to our clients who will be buyers sometime in the future. So Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I really do appreciate your allowing us to work with you on your home because this is going to serve and bless another family. How does that sound? So it really does invite and entice them to do business with us. And then I go through a complete presentation about who we are, what we do, how we operate, our award-winning program, and so much more about how our program works. Now, you, one of the things that you want to do is get yourself a presentation kit, whether you create it yourself. We've got them available. You can go to streetsmartinvestor.com and you can actually look at our seller presentation kit right there under tools. Always have the right contract with language to protect you and yield all the pros possible profits available. Well. Over the years, of course, I've been in this business now for over 40 years, and I've learned a lot of things in what to do and what not to do. And I can tell you that one of the most powerful things I ever learned way back in the beginning was to have the right paperwork. And I'm not talking about a standard realtor's agreement because the realtor's agreement first is designed to protect the realtor. Second, to protect the seller, and third, to protect the buyer. What I found is that I really needed two different contracts. I needed a buying contract, and I needed a selling contract, and I needed one that had negotiation built into the paperwork, and I needed one that had profit centers built into the paperwork. And so over the years, I designed one that was truly amazing and it's helped a lot of my students. You know, I've got clients in all 50 states and 16 foreign countries, and they just brag about my paperwork, and they say it's the best in the industry. And I'm very proud of that. I've worked hard to do that. I've figured out what works and what doesn't. You know, a paragraph, a phrase, a word, it can make all the difference in success in your paperwork. So, I put together something and it may be valuable to you and I've got a standard real estate purchase and sale agreement. Now one of the things I've got in there is the seller pays all closing costs and I break it down what the closing costs are. Well of course that's negotiable but what if they don't negotiate? You could pay for all of your cost of funds just by the seller paying all the closing costs and there's a lot more in there that can protect you. Things like 
when does the contract expire? And what if you had the never ending contract where if a seller wasn't going to close or didn't come to the closing, you had a contract that didn't expire. And there's so many other protections in there that are necessary for you. It's important because you could spend a lot of money getting ready to close on a transaction. You could have a title search done. You could have inspections done on the home. You could have a survey done and then all of a sudden the seller doesn't show up to close. How do I know this? <laughs> yes, I have lived it. So I've learned that there's some things I've got to do to protect myself. And I've got mediation and binding arbitration built in so we don't have to go through a protracted legal battle. And just things to entice the seller to get themselves to the table if they change their mind or want to change their mind. And I'm not saying that I don't give people an out, but we've got some things that can protect you from losing a lot of money. And that's really what it's designed to do. Now my system called buying, this is buying volume one. And it is available for you at streetsmartinvestor.com. Now under tools, you'll see what buying is all about, but it's got all of the forms, the step-by-step -step processes, the marketing, everything that we do to buy properties that I've used for many, many years and proven that it absolutely works. So check it out when you get a chance. Have the seller pay all closing costs. All right, so I have a contract that I've spent many years putting together in my career. I've, this is 40 plus years now I've been buying, selling, and holding property. And uh, I created something called the Standard Real Estate Purchase and Sale Agreement. Now, I'll just take this one clause and focus on it because I talked about the agreement in tip number 10. So let me tell you about this particular clause. Now this is our standard real estate purchase and sale agreement. It is loaded with profit centers, protection and negotiation for you. And this particular one says seller will pay all closing costs in to include recording fees, intangibles tax, credit report, funding fee, loan origination fee, document preparation fee, loan insurance premium, loan discount, title insurance policy, attorney's fees, courier fees, overnight fees, appraisal fee, survey, transfer tax, satisfaction recording fees, wood destroying organism report, and any other costs and fees associated with funding or closing this agreement. Buyer will pay all additional monies. Isn't that fantastic? All taxes, rentals, condominium or association fees, monthly mortgage insurance premiums, and interest on loans will be prorated as of the date of closing. So what happens is that this clause is already in the agreement. And many times our clients don't negotiate. They just simply go along with it. Now, of course it's negotiable. So you could strike out seller and put buyer. The other way you could fix it is actually say, well, you will pay the first $500 or seller will pay the first $500 of any closing costs and then you'll pay the difference. So of course, Everything in the agreement is negotiable, but if it's already built that way, many times people don't negotiate. Always file a notice of purchase and sale agreement to protect your deal from being taken. <laughs> Let me speak about that. It's amazing. We would like to believe that a seller, when they sign a contract with you, are going to actually go all the way through to closing but many times the seller has actually talked to other people or after they do a contract with you, they're going to talk with their next door neighbor, their uncle, their brother, their attorney. And all of a sudden somebody else says, well, I would have paid you that, or I would have paid you more than that. And then all of a sudden they're signing a second contract with somebody else. And have I seen that? Oh yes. And that's the reason I created a document, to protect myself so that people could not steal my deal. And you're going to love this one. I've had so many of my clients nationwide tell me that this contract actually made them and saved them 10, 20, 50, 100. One of them told me $225,000 is what this one document made for him. Now, what I call it is the notice of purchase and sale agreement. 
Now, the notice of purchase and sale agreement is a document that you would actually record at the courthouse to let the world know that this seller has entered into an agreement with you. And the cool thing is the seller signs it. They sign it at the same time that they sign your purchase and sale agreement that I talked about in another tip. So what happens is when they sign this, you trot down the next day to the courthouse and you get this recorded on public record. So then if there's a title search done by somebody else to buy the property out from under you, then this is going to pop up. You're going to pop up like a jack-in-the-box, baby. Oh, did you forget about me? This is my deal. And you can stop them dead in their tracks because what you've done is you've legitimately and legally clouded the title. Now, a little caveat, don't record this if you don't have a purchase and sale agreement. But if you do, you have every right to record this. Why? Because in my purchase and sale agreement, it actually says you're going to do exactly this and then your seller signs this and, and we put this on public record. Not the contract, just the notice of purchase and sale agreement. Have a contract that states disputes should be settled with mediation, then binding arbitration. All right, so over the years, I've developed an amazing agreement and it's what we call our standard purchase and sale agreement. Now this standard purchase and sale agreement is amazing because it takes care of profits. So it's got profit centers in there. It negotiates a lot of your transaction for you without each point having to be negotiated by you. And it's also got a lot of protection in there too. So the purchase and sale agreement, it's three pages long. And it actually goes through, one of the things it does is collect up all the money together on one page. So you don't have to hunt through the document to actually find out what the money looks like. And another thing it does is it actually puts you in a position to deal with issues before they occur. So we've got a clause in here, number 11, it's called default and attorney's fees. Now, if buyer defaults on this agreement, all deposits will be retained by the seller as full settlement of any claim, whereupon buyer and seller will be relieved of all obligations under this agreement. If seller defaults under this agreement, the buyer may seek specific performance or elect to receive the return of buyer's binder deposits without thereby waiving any action for damages resulting from seller's breach. If seller refuses, to sell for any reason other than those outlined herein. Seller and buyer herewith agree to resolve this dispute through binding arbitration with all costs of such arbitration being borne by the losing party. So what we're doing is, and there's some other words in here, but what's important is that we're solving a problem before it occurs because if a seller refused to sell to you for any reason, you may have already spent a bunch of money on getting ready for that closing. You may have ordered a title search. You may have uh, paid for a title binder. You may have done inspections on the property. You may have spent some money getting utilities turned on. There's things that you are faced with when you're trying to close a transaction. So you've got to protect yourself. If they refuse to close, now you've got an out. And by the way, they're going to initial that particular clause to make sure that they have agreed to mediation and binding arbitration. To assure your contract is binding, always give consideration. Now let me explain what that means. Contracts in order to be valid must have certain things in there. And of course you've got to have the parties in there, you've got to have the subject matter, and you've got to have some kind of consideration between the two parties that binds the contract. So here's what I recommend. And it's something that I've been teaching my clients to do for many, many years. And simply it's when your, per, your seller goes ahead and signs the purchase and sale agreement, then you go ahead and bind that by bringing a check with you. You make the check payable to the seller, whomever's signing that contract or sellers, if there's two of them or more, make the check payable to all of them, have them sign it on the back. So turn it over, have them sign it on the back, and go ahead and cash the check. 
Now, I'm not recommending you do that $500 or $1,000 that you might have heard or even more that real estate agents typically tell you in order to have a binding contract, they want to have a big, fat, earnest money. What I've done for years and been teaching my clients to do is $10. $10 is all you really need to bind a contract. I mean, it really, essentially, it could be a dollar, but we like the $10 because it's even more solid. So they're going to sign the check on the back. They're going to hand you back the check. You're going to hand them the $10, and boom, we have just bound that contract. Now you keep that check that you just cashed, put it in your folder, and now you've got evidence that you did give them consideration. One of the ways that sellers sometimes use to get out of a contract is to say there was never any consideration. Well, this is proof that there has been consideration. When there is equity, always ask for owner financing. Now, of course, this is when you're buying a property. Go through your what we call cost to sell worksheet. I'll be explaining this in another video. And what we do is actually sit down with a seller. We make a presentation to them and we end it with something called the cost to sell worksheet. We get down to a final number and at that final number, when we're actually making an offer to the seller, simply say that. When you get to that final number, you've already taken to an account if there is any existing financing on the property. So that final number is their equity in the property. Now at that point in time, you want to ask the seller, how would it work for you, or excuse me, would it work for you if you were to receive this in the form of dependable monthly payments? Now these are all buying tips that I've been given through this series and this one is when getting owner financing, ask for first right of refusal if the mortgage is sold. So one of my favorite ways to buy property is to have the seller be the bank. Write that down. The seller is the bank. Now when the seller is the bank, it's a really cool thing because of course you had, didn't have to go to the bank, you didn't have to qualify for a loan, you saved all the points, you saved the closing costs, you saved all of the pain and suffering of qualifying for that loan in the first place. Very, very powerful thing to master. And I mastered owner financing decades ago. And I share with my clients how to do that. I share that with my students, how to create an amazing business without going to banks and without qualifying for loans. It's one of my favorite ways to buy properties. Well, when you get a seller to carry back financing, then they're getting a mortgage and, and you're paying a note to that seller. Well, that has value and they could sell that to somebody else. If they were to sell it to somebody else, if it has a clause in there that says the payor, that's you, gets a first right of refusal to purchase that note because many times when those notes are sold, they're sold at a discount. So why not you receive that discount? Now, if you've got the funds to do it, great. You go ahead and buy the note. If you don't have the funds to do it, great. Let them sell it to somebody else and you keep on making your payments just like you agreed to do. I'm going through some of the contract closes in our amazing standard, rent, uh, standard purchase and sale agreement on the buying side. Now, I've got one for buying and I've got one for selling. So I'm focusing on the buying side here in this tip. When getting owner financing, ask for substitution of collateral. Now that's a powerful one. So I'm going to teach you how to master the process of getting sellers to carry back financing. I love the idea of the seller being the bank. Now when they carry back that loan, there's a mortgage. And in that mortgage, you have some stipulations in there, some clauses. And one of the clauses I recommend that you have in there, and it's included in my purchase and sale agreement, is that the seller agrees to something called substitution of collateral. So of course they're carrying back a mortgage on the property that they're actually selling to you. And you might find a buyer for that property. Well, it would be a terrible thing to get rid of that seller financing, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could move that seller financing to another property? Well, that's what I'm 
teaching you to do is move that financing to another property. And it's so powerful when you've got the right paperwork and you've got the right language. Now, I'm sharing with you something that we call our standard purchase and sale agreement. And it is loaded with profit centers and protection. And that's in my system called buying. Buying volume one. And one of the amazing things about having the right paperwork, it can make such a difference in your life. Go to streetsmartinvestor.com, click on tools, and then take a look at the buying system. I promise you, it will be well worth your investment. And we've really become a staple in the industry for paperwork. So you will know that you're getting the best paperwork in the industry. It's been tried, it's been true, and it's something that many of my licensees have used for literally decades. And I'm encouraging you to get that for you and your business too. Offer to buy the property subject to the existing financing. Oh my goodness, changed my life. First property I ever bought when I was 18 years old. I was able to do that by taking over the payments, taking over the existing financing on the property. How powerful that was. Back in the day, they had a thing called NENQ loans, non-escalating, non-qualifying loans. But Congress, in its infinite bought wisdom, <laughs> of course, the, the banks we all know, they influence the politicians by a thing called contributions to their campaigns, right? And so one of the things they created in 1982 was a law called the Garn St. Germain Federal Depository Institutions Act allowed the banks to put a clause in their mortgages called the due upon sale clause. Well, there were exceptions to that clause. And one of the things we did was create an entire system around those exceptions. I'm going to be teaching and sharing that with you. It's a very powerful and amazing thing. But we still to this day buy properties by taking over the existing financing on the property. Imagine that you could just step in, take over payments, continue to make the payments, that the seller actually qualified for the loan, they paid the closing costs, they paid all the expense of that loan, and you can step in. Maybe you're 15 years into that loan, and you now step in and start making the payments for the next 15 years. Wouldn't that be a powerful and wonderful thing? Again, the seller is the bank, and I love that when I can take over the existing financing. You don't have to go to the bank, you don't have to qualify for loans, you don't have to pay closing costs, you don't have to pay points. Very powerful, you can save a fortune. One transaction is worth thousands of dollars to you simply by using that amazing thing called buying a property subject to the existing financing. And I teach you how to do that in my trust system, volume four, trust system. You can find out more about that by going to streetsmartinvestor.com and click on tools and look at trusts, land, trusts, one of the most powerful things I've ever learned in my life. And because of land trust, you can do property subject to. Build an extension into your contract. Now, build an extension into your contract. What does that mean? So I've been talking in this series a bit about a thing called a standard real estate purchase and sale agreement. <laughs> and uh, I've seen what sellers do, and I've seen when they don't do what they're supposed to do. And I've seen that they can pull back on you and cause you a lot of expense and a lot of loss of money because you could have gotten a title search, you could have spent money getting a survey, maybe you had the home inspected. It's a lot slots you could have invested by the time you get to the closing. Well, what if they just wait you out? What if they waited to the date of expiration of your contract and all of a sudden you lose and they win because they all intended to do is to sell it to somebody else who was offering them more money. Well, what if you had the never ending contract? And I've got a great clause, uh, clause number six in my purchase and sale agreement. It says, Title examination place and time of closing. If title, evidence, and survey show seller is vested with a good, clear, and marketable title subject to permitted title exceptions contained in a national 
title insurance company commitment at its standard rates, permitted exceptions for restrictive covenants, leases, survey, current taxes, zoning ordinances, and easements of record, the transaction will be closed and the deed and other closing papers delivered on or before the blank date of blank, and that's the year, plus any extensions necessary in order to complete the paperwork. Now, I've got some other things in here, but the important thing is we just created what I love to call the never-ending contract, and it's built into the paperwork. If you'd like to have that contract, if you'd like to have uh, my whole buying system, I can tell you that it uh, has certainly changed my life. It's what I've been using for years. It's what my licensees all across America and all 50 states use this amazing contract. You can find out more about that go by going to streetsmartinvestor.com. Go to tools and click on buying volume one. Love to get you on board and give you also as a bonus two tickets to my upcoming Millionaire Jumpstart. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you'll use it. I hope it'll make a difference in your profits. I'd love to share more of my profitable free tips with you. How can you get more? Well, depending on where you're seeing this, please like it, please love it, comment on it, share it, subscribe, let others know about us, and thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, baby. Mm -hmm.